All right, everybody. This is uh, Getting Down to Grizzlies podcast number four. Uh, just laying in bed with a massive sunburn on my back. Just uh, did the incline today. I uh, wanted to get back to the elevation. It's been uh, messing with me a little bit in my training since being back from Vegas. So I wanted to kind of just blow my lungs out and go hit the incline. And that was fun. Um, it sucks, but I got through it. And uh, now I got this major sunburn on my back because I don't use sunscreen. So that's just a little known fact about me. I just refuse to use sunscreen because I'm a fucking man and I'll deal with the sunburn. But uh, so I'm about, I want to say about three weeks out from my fight. Um... And in two weeks, I got two weeks of a hard training left, and then um, that third week I'll be heading out to Germany, Hamburg, Germany, um, you know, for fight week. I'm excited, a little nervous, which is good, you know. Um, I feel like when I'm nervous, that's a good thing, I don't know, leading up to a fight. Not scared, just nervous, just excited, just ready, you know. Been training real hard this camp, I, I feel like I've probably trained this fight camp more like a professional athlete than I ever have before and um you know just my mindset's different you know I'm I'm having fun but also like I'm finding pleasure in working hard you know kind of finding that pleasure in that grind so I, I think it's going to be uh good because no matter what this camp has been great and it's been exactly what I need I feel uh, tougher mentally, physically, you know, than I have and, and probably in any fight in the UFC that I've had. You know, I'm, I'm one and two right now. Like I said, I would, I want to win, get to that two and two record, but, you know, it, it's not my main goal. My main goal is to go out this fight and just have fun and show who Jeremy the Grizzly Kimball is in that cage. You know, um, I've done it my whole career. And this is not nothing different than that, you know. But I've been putting all this extra pressure every single fight I've had in the UFC on myself. And, and I don't want that pressure there anymore. You know, um, being out in Vegas was was great. I got to train with a lot of big guys. Kind of test my neck, getting punched, my face, my chin. See uh, see if I'm tough. And, uh, you know, I kind of felt a lot, a lot of toughness coming out of me this camp. Um, you know, I got punched in the face pretty hard a few times. And smiled, walked through it, and had some fun, you know, so I think that that's good, you know, it, it kind of lets you know you're living, you know, so I've had a few hard sparring sessions, and, but, you know, I've been putting all this extra added pressure on myself, and I'm like, well, if I lose this fight and I get cut, then I'm just, I'll probably be done fighting, and I don't want to be done fighting yet, so I've put my all into this camp, but, you know, I was talking to Julian Marquez, out there um, at Syndicate MMA in Vegas, and he was like, hey man, they signed you for a reason, they like who you are as a fighter, so you just have to go out there and show that, go be explosive, go be athletic, go be that fighter that they signed, right, because if you're that fighter that they signed, that's what they want, they wanted the guy that they signed outside of the UFC, so I have to start fighting and having fun in that cage like I did the rest of my career, you know. And I've never really been worried about what my record was or winning and losing. I've just always been worried about fighting and being the toughest guy. Like, proving that I'm tough to myself and also just having fun, you know? Because I, I, at the end of the day, I love to do this. And this is one of my passions, probably my biggest passion, you know? So, I have to get back to that mindset of I need to get out there and just be me. Win or lose, just go be me and show them who the person they actually signed was, right? And um, so I, that's what I'm focused on this fight is no pressure, no stress, just being myself, just being the grizzly bear, you know? And um, so that's that's my mindset right now. Just beat my body to hell before the fight so it can handle a lot of abuse in the fight and go out there and, and fight my ass off, you know, if... If that happens to be a fight of the night fight, cool. If it happens to be a performance of the night, sweet. 
it happens to be a decision win or whatever it is. Like, I'm okay with whatever the outcome is as long as I go in there and uh, fight the toughest I've fought. And I, I just, I'm, I'm having fun and I go out there and I'm me. Right? And, and I, I want to show some skills this fight. Like, I want to show my technique and, and my my awkwardness and, and everything that makes me me. That's what I want to do. I want to go out there and just put a work of art in that canvas, you know. And and that's really what I think a lot of people are missing out on. And I, you know, fuck. It took it took a, another guy in the UFC to have a conversation with me and tell me that that's what I'm missing to realize that's what I was missing. You know, and I think a lot of people are missing that. Like, they go in there and they have these stressful thoughts of, oh, this might be my last amateur fight, or this is my first pro fight, or this is my tenth pro fight, or when is my time, you know? And they're not being true to themselves. So you got to go out there and, and be yourself every single fight. Like, who you are in the practice room, you know? And it's, fuck, I've seen it. Some people are, like, super serious in the practice room, and that's what it is. And that's, if you're that person, then go be that person in the fight, you know? Me, I'm a fun-loving guy. I like to smile. I like to joke around. I like to taunt, you know? And I think that is what makes me me, and that's what I'm going to go out there and do, right? Because why be this one person that in the room where I'm having fun taunting people, um, you know, not like in a bad way, just having fun, you know, kind of, kind of no, like calling my own shots, like just, I don't know, my personality shines through when I do that, right, but I haven't done that in, in the UFC yet, I haven't let my personality shine through, I haven't let, like really my fight persona show. Because, you know, I've, I've been more, like, serious. And, and why train and have all this fun and, and look look great and, and be smooth and, and be that person in the room and then go be stiff and so serious in the cage, you know? It doesn't make any sense because that's not the way I'm training. If I was training stiff and serious, then that, that would be something I would go do. But that's not how I train. So I'm trying to switch up who I am as soon as the cage closed behind me, and that that's not smart, you know. To me, that's, I don't know, just realistically, like, thinking about it, it's not, it's not good to just fucking throw out everything you've done in training camp and be somebody different in the cage, you know. So I, I think a lot of people need to realize that how they're training, that persona that they bring in the mats and the cage during training, training camp, that's the person you have to bring come fight night, you know, you can't be fucking doing all this shit, and then switching, to, like, here's an example, like, you couldn't be a wrestler throughout your whole fight camp, and then go into your fight, and be like, I'm a striker tonight, you know, it just doesn't work that way, so why train to be the fun-loving guy, likes to mix it up, likes to have some fun, and then get in the cage, and have to be serious, and, oh, I'm so nervous, and, like, it's eating me alive, like, I have to fucking, fin no, go out there, have fun, you know, I've, I've trained for fucking 10 rounds so I know I can do three so let's do three rounds and be myself you know and whatever happens happens and that's that's the the outlook I'm going into this fight and I'm I'm excited you know I'm just excited to do that and then show the UFC why they signed me and who I am you know um and I'm excited that I get to travel you know I've always got into fighting to to prove that I'm tough to myself but also to travel like I've always wanted to see the world and Fighting is one of, like, the few jobs you get to see the world, and you get to do it for cheap, because they're paying for it, you know, and you get to just go out there and show the people who you are, too, you know, you, I get to go out there and perform in front of a different country, right, and then get fans there and see what they like, and, and, and they get to see this American that they would not normally see, right? So, if, if in the fight-wise, you know, they get a lot of their their fights, their local fights, you know, and I'm sure they don't fly too many Americans into other countries because I've tried when I was outside the UFC to, to get some other countries, and if you don't have a big name, they don't really take the time to fly you out. So, you know, <clears throat> they get to see somebody they wouldn't normally see, and I get to fight in front of people I don't normally fight in front of, and that's amazing, you know? And I usually end up leaving with a lot more fans than I entered with, you know, just 
how I fight and my style kind of lends itself to to fans liking what's going on, you know, and giving both guys respect because, you know, I, I fucking, I fight weird, I fight awkward, but I brawl, and fans always love that exciting type of fight, you know, and say what you want, but three of my fights so far in the UFC have been exciting, so, you know, I just haven't got to show the skill set that I actually have, and I, I can't wait to do that, and, you know, I got family in, in Germany, so, you know, got to got a couple of uh, family members coming to watch me out there, and um, that, that's super cool, you know, because I haven't seen them in years, you know, probably since I was a kid, you know, I, I, they'll probably remember me more than I remember them, you know, but that's cool, you know, I get to perform in front of them, you know, it's like going back to the East Coast here, I get to pr perform in front of family, you know, so, it's gonna, it's gonna be super exciting, or super fun. Hey, I'm super excited for it, you know, um, and then my girlfriend Brittany's going out there to, to watch me fight, and then we're going to stay, um, an extra week in Germany and also head on over to Switzerland, yeah, Zurich, and, uh, you know, travel, you know, that's what I've, a big thing in my life that I, I want to check off is I want to travel anywhere and everywhere I can, you know, I think that's how you get out and, and you become a little more cultured, but you also kind of learn to love where you're from, you know, um, for me, when I was younger, I just, I was talking shit about Colorado, and can't wait to get out of here, and, and, and all that stuff, and now that I've left a lot, like, I've gone to a lot of different cities inside of the states, and I've gone to a few different countries, and, you know, adding to that, but every time I leave, I know I grow respect for for my home, you know, I can't wait to get home, I can't wait to to get back, and maybe it's just because it's, it's, you know, it's comfortable, it's not like a hotel, it's, it's your life, and that's like what you know, but for me, I just, like, I learned to love Colorado because of traveling, you know, I, I go to these other places, and it's just not home, you know, it's, I, I find myself always comparing it, to, to Colorado, you know, I was just out in Nevada, and I'm like, oh, this street looks like Powers in, in Colorado, you know, um, and that's, like, where I spent most of my time was, like, in that, like, road, I would leave the casino area and, you know, go eat there or go, go train and, and hang out over in that little area that looked like something that was home, you know, so to me, you, traveling makes you, first of all, get to see different cultures, and you get, you get more culture yourself, but you also learn to love home, you know, you know, unless you just absolutely hate your home, which I never really did, but I just, you know, stuck here so long that I wanted to, to just act like I hated it, but not being stuck here anymore and having to travel a lot and, and going other places to train and, and dirty cities, like, we're, I'm real lucky in Colorado to have, especially Colorado Springs, like, where I live, it's a beautiful, clean city, and a lot of these other cities and states are just dirty, you know, and a lot of countries are like that too, like, you know, so, there's like, I don't know, it's just dirty over there, and, you know, I'm, I'm a germaphobe anyway, so, when I come home, it's it's clean, it's nice, I can smell good air, like, have good water from the tap, so, you know, it's just one of those things where I'll get to go travel and, and see beautiful places, they are beautiful, but then I always have that respect when I'm home, it's home, you know, and I always talk a big game about moving out of Colorado, I was just talking to, to Brittany about this, and yeah, I would love to like live in Australia, but to be honest with you, it's on my bucket list, I haven't been over there, you know, I could go over there and absolutely hate it, like it could be dirty, it could be everything that I don't want, you know, so it's going to be hard pressed for me to find a place that I like better than Colorado Springs, you know, as far as like living there, but that being said, I love traveling. I know it didn't sound like it, but I, I do love traveling, and I do love seeing other people's way of lives, and I, I love getting over there and getting some culture. You know, my boy Dylan always talks shit about me. Like, I won't eat a lot of, like, local foods at other places, you know, and I definitely stay away from, like, places that look shady, especially, like, in Thailand. Not just Thailand, but, like, those type of countries, I just stay away, you know, you never know what you're going to get, 
you never know what you're really eating, you know. So to me, I, I kind of I go over there and I will stick to like, especially like food wise, because I, I just I don't know, I'm, I'm stuck in my ways with food, so I'll find like the places that are closest to um, American food, and I'll I'll go there. You know, I I don't like to try new things that way, but I get to go see these countries. I get to go walk around. I get to go see their culture. I get to go see what kind of food they eat and, and, you know, I get to be around it and that's cool, you know? So to me, that's, that's culture. Like I'm getting cultured and just cause I don't enjoy going to those places and eating doesn't mean I don't like to see what they eat, you know? And, uh, and kind of get the sense of what, what their, their culture is and, and how they live and, and what they enjoy, you know? Cause to me, that's all learning. No matter if I'm, if I'm enjoying what they enjoy, you know, but I, I get to see what they like. And that just puts something in my brain of, oh, okay, they like that over there. Check, you know. So now I'm a little bit smarter, knowledgeable about that other cultures, you know. And uh, that that's why I love traveling. And and also I just, you know, I like to see how people train. Like we went to Thailand and trained. That was great. Um, fighting in Croatia was a crazy experience. And, and I'm sure fighting in Germany is going to be, like, a different experience from all of those. So, you know, and I, I like to see the fight scene there. Like, that's my biggest thing. Like, we went to Thailand because it was the mecca of Muay Thai. And it sure did not disappoint in that area, you know. Probably, like, the most popping gyms I've seen from morning to night, you know. We get there early. <sighs> Fuck, people are training everywhere. And we leave at night. Or like come back to eat because they have a good grill, and it's eight eight o'clock at night, still popping like thirty different classes going on, with just full, full thirty full classes going on, you know. So it's cool, you know that that was a great experience. And then like I see, Vegas is um how how they train, you know. I know it's not a different um country, but but it's different. Like it's a different state, and it's. A different way of, of life out there too, you know. Um, when I train in Arizona, it's all like punctual. You gotta be on time, and, and then I go to Vegas, and because we all go to different gyms and travel, you know, we go from the UFC Performance Institute to Extreme Couture or to Syndicate, and and they're not like they're real relaxed. You come in late, you come in late, doesn't matter. You just hop in and get and fit in. You know, you just fit in. You see what they're doing and. You keep, you know, you keep grinding, you know, and, and that's cool. That's super cool. Like, cause I'm like that. I, I, I don't mind being late, you know, even though, uh, my coach hates it. I am kind of late by nature anyways. So being out in Vegas is cool. You'd be a little late, but you still work hard. You know, they do enough to where if it was like a sparring day, if you're 15 minutes late, they haven't even started sparring yet. They're doing some drills, and then you can hop into sparring, you know, because we have, especially a lot of the UFC guys, we have a schedule at the Performance Institute that we have to go do, so we go do that before, or we go do that schedule there, and they understand that, so you go in, and they'll give you a little bit of leeway of hopping in and and then getting to sparring so you don't miss any rounds, because they know, all right, these people are probably going to be a little bit late, depending on, like, where our gym is in comparison to the performance institute and you know so it's it's cool seeing like everybody's different takes on fighting and, and how how training is and you know it's different everywhere every every state every every country it's all different you know and i've been blessed to be able to train in a few different places and and kind of take on that nomad training philosophy where I'm just going to go train, you know, I'm not going to pledge my allegiance to, to really much. You know, I have my gym team, uh, Shingatai Slaughterhouse in Colorado, but I move on and kind of be that, that nomad fighter outside of that, you know, cause I don't have many big guys, at, um, at my gym. I don't have any big guys at my gym really to work with. So I get in shape, I work my cardio, I get that elevation training in Colorado and then I move on and I go, wherever, wherever big guys are, you know, Team Nomad, you know, I've trained in Arizona at the MMA lab, they're great, I love them, you know, and I know I'll be back, 
like that's that's one thing I know. Like I'll know I'll go train there again because I really like their philosophy in training. You know, be there on time, be the hardest worker in the room, get one percent better every day. I love that. But I also know as many contracts as I can get in the UFC, I'm gonna be going to the UFC PI as much as I can. You know, because they're really awesome. They help you get better in the ways that I lack. You know, like being an athlete is something I lack at. You know, I'm athletic. But somebody, like, honing my athletic... Like, instead of me just being a raw athlete, they're honing and making me an all-around athlete and, like, using my athleticism to, to, to make... like, But making that athleticism better, like, sharper. Instead of just being this super raw athlete, I'm turning into an athlete that knows how to control his body. Why you have to start and stop on a dime. Why you have to do this. Why you have to do that. It's... So that's great, and I know I'll be back for that, you know. And then those gyms that surround their Extreme Couture and Team Syndicate are, are amazing places to go train. You know, you get work with tough, high-level guys, and that's just, that's great. You know, that's fantastic to be able to work with big guys that are high-level. And I know I'll be back in Tiger Muay Thai. Like, I know I'll go back to Tiger Muay Thai one day because, like, George Hickman was great, like, there's a great training partners there. JQ and Glenn Sparv, they were great. You know, so to me, I know I'll be back to all those places and I know I'm going to go see other places, you know. I have a few places on my on my training bucket list that I want to see. I want to go and see their philosophy and see how they train. So, I'm really enjoying this nomad fight camp, you know. Um kind of just home to none like I, I have my home base with my dad as my coach and and Justin Loudon as my wrestling coach and I I love that right that'll always be my home gym but until I grow it to where I have 100 students different classes and big guys to work with I know I'll have to go other places so why not branch out and then you know first of all I get to meet cool people I get to meet great training partners like Todd Duffy was amazing he was great um fuck I'm trying to think of a few other guys that were out there that were just awesome um you know Uriah Hall is always super cool to be around um you know there, there's like Tom Lawler was super cool I didn't get to train with him much I got to train with him one day but that dude was cool plus he's a professional wrestler on the side, so I got to talk with him for about 10-15 minutes about professional wrestling, which was pretty cool, because he's met some of my like favorites outside of the WWE, like, he met the Young Bucks, said they were super cool, which is great to hear, because, you know, a lot of people that you want to meet usually never turn out to be the, that that cool, so it was cool to hear that they were awesome. Um, yeah, there was a few other guys just really enjoyed working with um due to syndicate johnny i don't want to even try his last name because i'll get it wrong but uh sick muay thai guy like literally laid into me with leg kicks fucked me up probably one of the best muay thai guys i've gone with and i've went to thailand you know and that's no knock at them so if i come back please don't try to fuck me up just because i said that he was just really good as well <laughs> um but yeah, like he was great to work with. Probably like probably my favorite sparring rounds were with him, you know. Um Julian Marquez, he was great. He was uh real cool. I told a story about him kinda helping my my mental out. And I you know, that to me is like the biggest thing. He's probably the coolest person I met out there because he definitely like helped my mental. Like, he has a really good way of looking at MMA and being signed to the biggest company, so yeah, like all those guys. Um, John Wood was a great coach. You know, um, so yeah. It was, it was just great. Um, great experience out there, and, you know, I'm just I'm getting ready, excited for this fight. I'm a little tired, so if I kind of go off track or repeat, that's why. Um, plus his sunburn sucks, but, um, you know, I'm, 
I'm, I've I still got a few weeks to work, like, as hard as I can, and kind of just crush myself, you know, which I have been, and I, like, my weight, I'm already 15 pounds, um, to go, like, left, and, like, that's way better than I have, probably, like, ever, in any fight, you know, I've never been this close to weight, like this, this close to weight this far out, you know, um, and that's, that's a lot, like, my diet, um, out in Vegas, they, they give you food, like, if you, if you were in the UFC and you belong to that UFC Performance Institute, you kind of get your meals made for you every day, and that's just, like, to me was, uh, probably the biggest thing, like, it, like, really fucking, um, Help me out, because I was kind of worried about my weight going out there, and then I started getting their their plan, their diet plan, and, and they kind of broke it down for me in, like, stupid terms, because I'm not very bright when it comes to all that high-tech shit, so they kind of broke it down for me, and it was one of those things where, fuck, like, it makes sense to me now. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I know what I'm supposed to be eating. I know what I'm not supposed to be eating. I know what I'm supposed to do. I know when I'm supposed to fast. I know when I'm not supposed to fast. Like, you know, it it it, it was great. Um, and then they really do a, a good job of explaining it to the fighters because they know that not all of us are super bright. <laughs> so, so my weight feels good. And then also thanks to Justin Loudon on that too because... He pushes me and uh, working, like having him there because he went out with me. He's my Colorado wrestler. He's my wrestling coach based in Colorado Springs with me. But he took two weeks to go out with me to Vegas and, and train, you know, and he's a fucking madman. So it made me push my mind and my body to that madman level. And it's exhausting. I don't know how he does it all the time. He's He's a freak. But, you know. It, it pushed me to that level as well, and I, I'm very happy about that, and, you know, so, yeah, I get to work with a lot of great coaches, like I said, John Wood was great, forgot to mention um, Dennis Davis over at uh, Extreme Couture, so, he was great, Justin Loudon, Ernest Kimball, like, I'm prepared for this fight, you know, I have some great coaches that helped me prepare for this one, and, you know, a lot of training partners, a lot of great training partners as well. So, um, yeah, I, th I think that's where it's at. Um, probably repeated a lot of stuff, and I definitely know I repeated um a lot. So, anyways, this has been uh, the Getting Down to Grizzlies podcast number four. I'm gonna I'm gonna pump these out. Like I, leading up to the fight, I'll probably I'm gonna try to do at least one a week. And kind of just like my mindset and whatever's going on. Um, I don't know what's going on with my other podcast. I'm going to talk to Dill. We're both uh, busy gentlemen. And he's kind of doing his own thing. His own podcast. Which uh should check out. He's good at it. You know. Um, plus his as video. And then um, yeah. I'll talk to him about the Grizz and Grind podcast. And uh, we'll kind of see what we're doing from there, cause like I said, he's he we've been both super busy, and um, we might just have to put a hold on that one and and kind of do our own things. But that's not like a for sure. So I'll I'll definitely talk to him and kind of see where we want to go as far as the Grizz and Grind podcast. But like I said, um, and then after my fight, I'm gonna get a computer and. Um, so I can do my own video. Because I, I do this off a of phone right now. But, um... Yeah, so I think after my fight I'm going to buy a computer and, and kind of get cracking on, on the Getting Down to Grizzness podcast. And kind of make a push for that one. And then, um, also the Grizz and Grind podcast if we can get our times together. So. Alright, well that was a little bit of my life. Um... 
you know, um, no matter what you are, how you're doing, um, in this fight world, this is crazy, shit happens, fights fall out, body gets injured, you can't fight, whatever it is, um, in life, life is hard sometimes too, you know, kind of kicks us all in one way or the other, um, so just know, keep your heads up and, uh, keep grinding, and, and, and the biggest thing is to never give up, don't give up on yourself, don't give up on your circumstances, just keep grinding, and, um, you, you'll make it, you know, that, that's what I'm, I'm focused on, is, is not giving up, not giving up on myself, and just pushing, you know, pushing, we get one life, so let's, uh, fucking push till these wheels fall off, alright, let's get into the business, love you guys.